morning and welcome to a moment of truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God at the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. We are so honored today that you would take time to tune in and to listen to what we have to say about God's Word. We want to bring you a message of hope, a message of, of life. Jesus Christ, through His resurrection, give us that life. The, in Apostle Peter's writing, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again uh, to a lively hope, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. We, we got that through Jesus Christ, but God chose us to that, that life through his resurrection. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we have that. We've been teaching some, somewhat about the, uh, the promises that God had given us, and if we would contingent upon our life and what we would do. Through repentance, through turning from the filth of the flesh and turning away from the sin that is in our life and coming to Jesus, then, then we can have some promises that he had made. Uh, we've, we've talked about the promise that, that God had made to Abraham back in Genesis when he uh, had, had told him to take his son up, on the, up to the altar and, and have him for a sacrifice and that God had told him that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because of him. And we have that blessing today through Abraham and through Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to get back to finishing up here with Apostle Paul. I told you how that Paul had, had persecuted the church and that he had wasted it. He had, he had stood before uh, in, in Acts, the 26th chapter, and I, I believe it was the, uh, the 10th verse. He said, or we'll read the 9th verse. I verily thought myself, with myself, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ, which things I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison and have received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. You see, Apostle Paul, he was, he was teaching about, at this point in time, he had gotten captured and put into prison and in bonds for teaching the very thing that he had destroyed. Um, you know, in, in life, we feel like some people feel as though they can't live free from sin. They can't live a life without sin but Jesus promised us that we could if we would come to him and give it to him he said casting all your care upon the Lord for he careth for you if you will cast your burden upon him he shall sustain thee he'll give you what you need in this natural life that we have in our body we can't do it within ourselves. we're not sufficient of ourselves to think anything is of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. If we come to Jesus Christ and we truly are persuaded that Jesus is the Lord and we surrender our life to him, then we can live that life free from sin. And believe you me, it's, it is a possible thing. If not, why did little John put in his writing in John the third chapter, or the first, first chapter and the third verse, I believe it is, little John, these things I write unto you that you sin not. If it was not possible to live that way, then, then we need to just take that out of the book. Uh, that's false hope. But there is hope in Jesus Christ that we can live a life free from sin, but we have to bring them to him. We have to have that blood applied to our life. Now, Apostle Paul, he, he was preaching or teaching here uh, to King Agrippa, and he was telling him the things that really King Agrippa already knew. Uh, he was being, Paul had been brought to King Agrippa, over the things that, that he had been bound for. And that was, if we'll read in the 21st verse of the 26th chapter, for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. He was in there teaching the things that I'm fixing to talk to you about. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than that which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should rise from the dead. And these things, as we, we know within our life, have been taught by the Word of God, this, this blessed book that, I, that we have here that we go by. It is our road map. And I want to go back to Paul here. Uh, he was telling King Agrippa in the 12th verse, he said, Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, he had authority to bind all that called upon the name of the Lord. Now, this was before the light had come down. He had that authority to bind all that called upon the name of the Lord, and he was to bring them and to put them in prison and to, and to have them put to death. 
But God had a great job for Apostle Paul. He had something that he wanted Apostle Paul to do. Now you remember, Apostle Paul lived the straightest sect of religion, a Pharisee. He had religion, but he didn't have salvation until Jesus Christ came into him. And I want to get to that. Uh, he said, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speak unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. This was Jesus Christ talking to Saul at that time, Apostle Paul, and telling him that he was persecuting Jesus. Paul I'll read the 15th verse, and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. You see, it wasn't the, the actual natural flesh of Jesus that Apostle Paul had went and persecuted. It wasn't that he had physically seen Jesus and, and had persecuted him as in a, a state of saying something against him personally uh, to himself. He was doing it to, to God's people. I, I read... In the book where it said it's better that a millstone be cast about your neck and cast into the sea. Wrapped about your neck and cast into the sea than to offend one of God's little ones. It's, it's so important to love your neighbor as yourself. For some have entertained angels unaware. So you have to be careful who it is that you are entertaining. And, and when Paul saw this light, it knocked him to his knees and it blinded him. And, but he, he said in the 15th verse again, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But arise, stand on thy feet. Jesus had good news for Paul. Even though that Apostle Paul was seeing himself here in the things that he had done by persecuting God's people, Jesus brought that light to him as I want to tell you today. You may be living a life in sin. And I may be telling you that today that, that you're living in sin and that 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 sin can cause you to go to hell. But I also want to tell you that that sin can be freed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can have that blood applied to you if you will believe. One of the most quoted verses in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can have life today. You can have that joy. You can have that that fulfillment of life. You don't have to go through life discouraged and down and, and, and drawn out. Uh, so many people come to, them, come to a place where they even want to commit suicide. Uh, they, they just believe that there's no hope. There is hope. There is hope. Believe in Jesus Christ. Come to him. Repent of your sins. There's something greater for you. There is a promise as he told in, in, in the, the second chapter of Acts, Peter did when they had realized that they had crucified the Lord of glory. When they had realized that they had sinned against Jesus Christ. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. That's something you need in your life. You need that, that assurance that you are coming to the Lord. And you need to, to let him know that you love him, that you surrender all. And you, you do the things that he told you to do. Repent and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is that Holy Ghost? It's a promise that Jesus made. If you'll read in Acts the first chapter, he told them, said, Tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. That power was to come. That power was the Holy Ghost. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another comforter. That comforter is to abide with us forever. That comforter is the Holy Ghost. That is one of those promises that God made. If you repent of your sins, you can receive that gift of the Holy Ghost. Back to Paul here. He said, but Jesus told him, said, but rise, stand up on thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and witness both of these things which thou hast seen and those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. The very people that, G that Apostle Paul had crucified, the very pe people that he had went and spoke against when they were 
when they were to be persecuted, he, he had to go right back to those ones and to teach to them Jesus Christ. He had to go right back to them and talk to them. That brings something to my mind. And, and uh, I, believe it's, I believe it's in Luke's writing. He said that uh, God would not tempt you above that which you are able, but will with the temptation make an escape. The very things that, could, that bother you could be the things that help you to overcome. When you realize that you can live a life without those things, when you realize that you can lay them down, you can look back at those things and see how God has brought you from that. And that will give you hope. That will give you faith. That will give you encouragement to know that you have laid them down. And with those very temptations that come before you, when they, when they are there and, and presenting themselves to you, when you go maybe to a place and you, you get into something that, that you used to get into and, and you see that you're not where you need to be, that you need to get away from that, that temptation, God will give you a desire not to want to do it anymore. And with that temptation, he'll make a way for you to escape. That's what happened to Apostle Paul here. He, he, was, he was persecuting these people, but God sent him right back into the same place to teach to them that Jesus Christ did die, that he did resurrect, and he did give us that life. Through that resurrection, we have hope. That verse that I quoted before, the blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's where our hope comes from. That's where our life comes from. That everlasting joy. That everlasting peace. I want to get into uh, uh, about sin and what sin will do for you and how that sin can cause you to lose out. Cause you to lose out. Apostle Paul here with this, this man, uh, uh, King Agrippa, he, he had told him these things. And let me, let me read this 17th and 18th verse. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive for forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now listen to Paul right here. He said, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and through the coast of Judea and the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meek for repentance. That's what God wants in us in our life, that we would do works meet for repentance. We turn from the things that we were doing before and we turn to God. Oh, oh Paul, when he came to the king, king told him, said, thou hast almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Oh, how sad to be almost persuaded. We need to be fully persuaded. We need, that's why I'm preaching here today. That's why I'm teaching. I want to persuade you to be that Christian for God. Turn your life over to the Lord. Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but all those this, this day that hear me were both almost and all together such as I am. Come and visit with us down at the Church of God at the Union Assembly. May God bless you is our prayer.